Hi, I am Raghav from Automation Step by Step and welcome to this Cypress Beginner Tutorials. I hope by now you have started using and loving Cypress. In this session, I am going to go very basic step by step and we are going to see how to access and interact with elements in Cypress. Now I know in the earlier session we have already started using the elements and interacting with elements at a very basic level. Let us see some more options today. So the first step I will do is I will run my test that I created in the earlier session. So let me go to my Visual Studio code and here I have my project and I will go to the Cypress folder and go to integration folder and this is my first test.js now you can also find a new file here demo.js do not worry about this i just created it for doing some testing on my own and running some examples so do not worry on this i will go to my first test.js that i created in the last session and here we are going to google.com and typing automation step by step and hitting enter let me first run this and check I will go to my terminal here and you can also go to your terminal from here and then here I will say npx cypress open and hit enter and it opens our project on the GUI and I will click on my first test.js and it will start the execution so the tests are getting ready and now it is executing it goes to google.com and now it will type automation step by step and yes and hit enter and it is done so this is done and this is our very simple test now step number two is on the browser where our application has run or our test has executed in the app preview section i will click on selector playground so if i go to the browser where the test got executed you can see this is the app preview section here and here i have this open selector playground we can also call it as element locator we have already seen this in our earlier session i can click this and then i can hover over any element and it will give me the locator and this is the entire command that I can copy from here and paste in my script. You can also see we have cy.contains as well. So we can get the locator and the command from here and then can paste it in the script. So let us see uh, if I try, uh, let me see this one training by Raghav and I will copy this, go to my Visual Studio code and I can just say I will copy it here I will paste it here and you can see this is the command and now if I want I can say dot click or any action I want to do on the command for now let me say click and save as soon as I will save it will start executing and you can see the test is running again and yes it has clicked on that link and yes you can see it has gone to the training by Raghav page. So this is working fine and this is how you can do a very basic command interaction and add the commands and scripts in your test script. So we know this, we have already seen this earlier as well. Now let us see how to add custom timeouts at a command level. Uh, let me do, do one thing. Uh, I'm just going to remove this. I can also comment this out. I can keep my cursor here on this line and press control and forward slash on my keyboard if you are on mac you can press command and forward slash it will comment out or let me just remove this i do not want this now let me say uh, here i will remove this i will make some mistake here let me just remove this f so that this element will now not be located as i press as i save my test you can see it is now running my test and if you see here we got a failure so this time we have a failure and if you see here this dot glfy this is a assertion error and it could not find this element and you can see the assertion error here and you can also see the stack trace if you want you can see the complete stack trace and you can go to the application and see where which page there was this error on and now if you see here you will see it says 
timed out retrying after 4000 milliseconds that is 4 seconds and this is the default inbuilt timeout whenever there will be any assertion or any error it will wait for 4 seconds before it finally fails the step so this is inbuilt in cypress and this is very handy it will not directly fail any step it will wait for a default timeout of 4 seconds however in case you want to increase this timeout you can add custom timeouts at a command level and also at a global level let me show you first how you can add at a command level let us say for this particular step i want to increase the timeout so i can just say here i will give a comma and then within curly brackets i will say timeout and i can give some extra timeout here let us say 6000 which is 6 seconds and as i save it has started execution again and you can see it will now wait for some extra time before actually failing this and here you can see it is now waiting for 6000 milliseconds or 6 seconds so whenever required and if you know there are some steps or some commands that can take some extra time you can always add a timeout like this at a command level now there can be situations or scenarios where you want to add the timeout at a global level for example you want to add a timeout for the entire testing and the entire application in that case you can go to the cypress.json file which is our configuration file and we can add the timeout here so if i go to my cypress.json you have seen already in the earlier session that we can make this watch for all for file changes true or false and this is the setting that will impact the running of a test as soon as we make any changes let me make this as false i do not want to run my test on every change i save and then i will add a new setting for timeout make sure that you add a comma here and then here i will say default command timeout and i can give the timeout here so i will say default command timeout and let me say uh, 5000 or 5 seconds this is 5000 milliseconds that will mean 5 seconds and now you can also see as soon as i am saving now it is not running my test because i have made watch for file changes as false here so i will save my test and now let me close this terminal or i will press command c to terminate the job and i will start a new job let me also clear the terminal i will say clear and now i will run npx cypress open so it has opened our gui and i will click on my first test.js and let us see now so it is loading our test and now our test is starting and yes this is running uh, somehow it is taking a lot of time let me stop it and run it again from here and yes this is fine this is running now and you can see this time it failed and of course it is waiting for six seconds because we have not yet removed the timeout from our command level i will just remove this from here and then save and now it will not run as soon as i save i will have to click on this run all test so i will run again and let us see the timeout this time and you can see the timeout this time is five seconds which is coming from our global settings so we have done step number five let us also see how to access an element with a text so i will go back to my script and i will correct my mistake here so this is the correct class name and now after this let me run this and check i will now again say run all tests and this time it is running fine and now i have come to this page now here let us say i want to click on uh, this link that is for videos i will again go to my selectors playground and click here so you can see this is the command but this time instead of cy.get i want cy.contains and i can copy this from here 
I will have to go back and copy the cy.get. I will copy this. And here I will paste. And instead of get, I can say contains. And when I say cy.contains, or I can write the command from scratch, I will say cy.contains and the text I want to search is videos and then I want to click on it. So I will say dot click. And that's it. I will save and run my test again. Let us see what happens this time. So this is fine. And yes, you can see it has clicked on the videos link and here are my videos. So this is working fine and you can use cy.contains to find an element based on its text. And with this we have also done step number 6. So this is the command cy.contains. Let us do a very quick recap. Today we have learned how to access and interact with elements, what are the different options. We also learned how to add custom timeouts at command level and at global level and the commands we have learned today is cy.contains and there is a cy.wait command as well. I believe I forgot to show you this. So this is kind of a hard wait. Just in case you want to wait, I can say cy.wait and I can give some timeout here in milliseconds. So I will say 5000 or let me say 4000 that will wait for four seconds and now if I go and run my test again you will see there will be a wait so here after this you can see it is waiting for four seconds this is waiting for four seconds and after that it will do the next step so this is kind of a hard-coded wait that you can use in Cypress and you will see a lot of options when you go to cypress.io and go to the interacting with elements section let me very quickly show you if I go to cypress.io and here you can go to the docs. So let me also show you again. This is the docs link and this will take you to the documentation for Cypress. And here if you go to the core concepts, you will see a section interacting with elements and this has lots of information. You can see all these different actions that you can do on elements click, double click, right click, type, clear, etc. And you can see all these options. If you go to any of the element, any of the actions, for example, I go to dot click, it actually takes you to the API and all these commands. So you can see all the commands are here. So this will be very, very useful throughout your journey with Cypress. You can always check this documentation. And with that, I hope this was very useful for you. You can take the Cypress quiz on my website automationstepbystep.com and I hope you like this video. Please share your knowledge with everyone and never stop learning.